On July 27th and 28th, 2013, the 21st International Congress on Nutrition and Integrative Medicine was held in Sapporo, Japan. There were 365 attendees from 20 countries. The many research results were presented with a focus on AHCC and oligonol. Continuous efforts to accumulate and utilize the evidence from global researches in integrative medicine with functional foods were acknowledged by the Hokkaido Bureau of Economy, Trade and Industry Japan. And this meeting is sponsored by them and held by AHCC Research Association. The 21st International Congress on Nutrition and Integrative Medicine has also raised a question in some people's mind. The keynote lecture was given by Dr. Philip Calder, Professor of Nutritional Immunology at the University of Southampton, UK. He talked about the role of nutrition in supporting the immune system, and there were many positive responses, indicating a high level of interest in the topic. There were 21 presentations of high standard researches with a main focus on AHCC and oligonol. Attendees from 20 countries were present, and the presentations were translated live into four different languages. My work is mainly based uh, around looking at the immune effects of uh, probiotics and with prebiotics in healthy individuals. And our work centered on looking at uh, giving healthy individuals uh, combinations of bifidus uh, BB536, which is a probiotic bacteria containing bifidobacterium longum, and combining this treatment with a prebiotic AHCC. And previous studies have indicated that AHC, AHCC may enhance the effect, the probiotic effects of bifidus BB536. So we enrolled uh, 40 individuals and divided them into groups of 10 to receive placebo, bifidus 536, AHCC or combinations of probiotic and prebiotic. And what we found when we sampled blood and identified uh, different immune cells such as the T cells and T regulatory cells and dendritic cells was that there was a change in both phenotype and also in function. We uh, were able to show that different subsets of dendritic cells uh, were of increased prevalence such as the myeloid dendritic cells and also when we subdivided myeloid dendritic cells into two classes MDC1 and MDC2 based on uh, surface cell uh, markings we were able to show that the MDC2 class was increased. The implications of this is, are that the MDC2 uh, type uh, dendritic cells generally have uh, anti-inflammatory properties and it may be that uh, AHCC in combination with uh, the probiotic bifidobacterium longum may favor this type of property. A poster session was held in the lobby, revealing 29 topics on the presentations. Many people gathered there, attendees spoke directly to the researchers, and overall interest was raised. We did some research on HCC uh, regarding immune system response and we also did some uh, research on HCC regarding uh, its effect on uh, cancer stem cells and uh, we get really very uh, promising uh, results. HCC did indeed uh, 
decrease the formation of cancer stem cells, especially the cancer stem cell derived from uh, breast cancer cell line. And cancer stem cell as like uh, uh, tumor seeding cancer cell line. And if we control those cancer seeding uh, cells, you can control many aspects of the tumor, especially metastase, relapse, and uh, recurrence in uh, breast cancer survivorship. So in summary, uh, HCC could uh, present preventive effect because it will uh, uh, enhance the alertness of the immune system and at the same time could be also used as the uh, combinatory uh, mechanism or combinatory approach during uh, uh, treatment after, after uh, breast cancer su surgery and chemotherapy. We did a triple-blinded placebo-controlled trial using AHCC as the experimental arm and placebo as the control arm for patients with head and neck carcinomas such as nasopharyngeal, tongue and maxillary ca carcinomas undergoing uh, radiation therapy together with chemotherapy. So we, the parameters that we observed include the onset and the incidence rates of mucositis, dysphagia, as well as laboratory parameters, and we also measured the quality of life for these patients undergoing concurrent chemoradiation therapy. For our research, we noted that AHCC significantly improved the patient's quality of life for patients with head and neck carcinomas. And we believe that uh, if we use AHCC for other tumors, such as let's say breast cancer, cervical cancer, we might get the same results for this. So this, these are applications in, in uh, tumors, in oncology, in cancer, and we believe that with AHCC we can uh, improve patients' quality of lives by taking HCC together with their uh, prescribed treatments. After the lectures on the first day, everyone gathered for a reception. It was an event where attendees were able to communicate with and deepen relationships with people from different fields and exchange important information with each other. A ceremony took place there to present awards to researchers with outstanding results. AHCC Research Association rewarded the following Promising Research Award, Young Investigator Award, and Best Poster Award. Finally, the Best Research Award was awarded by Hokkaido Bureau of Economy, Trade and Industry Japan. Uh, we're studying a combination of AHCC and BB12 in healthy people. So this was a randomized placebo control study containing 50 people participated. And the um, design of the study was that people took uh, either a combination of AHCC plus BB12 for four weeks or placebo for four weeks. And after this, they received uh, the influenza vaccination and then they continued to take either the AHCC BB12 blend or placebo for four weeks. And what we did is we collected uh, samples and we looked at their circulating um, types of cells in their blood as well as um, numbers, as well as a vaccine-specific immunoglobulin production. And what we found was that uh, following the f initial four-week um, consumption of AHCC BB12, we saw an increase in certain uh, antigen-presenting cells. These included myeloid dendritic cells as well as monocytes and also uh, specifically the CD14 and CD16 double positive monocyte cells. And we then found after the immune challenge, the uh, vaccine, the influenza vaccine, what we found was that uh, there was an increase in uh, vaccine-specific immunoglobulin production, specifically uh, the IgG3 and the subclass IgG3, uh, uh, sorry, the subclass IgG3, and that these were significant results, particularly in the uh, individuals who took the AHCC BB12 and not in the placebo group. And from this, we can con concluded that the initial phase of four weeks uh, had a beneficial effect on increasing antigen-presenting cells, and therefore, after an immune challenge, uh, the immune system was better able to respond to this challenge and produce more immunoglobulin. For me, it's uh, many kinds of uh, diseases like uh, 
uh, asthmas, chronic asthma, uh, autoimmunology diseases uh, like uh, rheumatoid diseases as other one. It's, we have the good experience we, in child uh, when we use the dose uh, approximately one gram per day with uh, little child with uh, asthma, with chronic asthma. Yeah, yeah, it's like good results. For my, I think, uh, I hope that the next study will be in the use in um, HCC, HCC in patients with uh, inflammation of thyroid because there is a very big problem in, I think it's not only Europe and in Japan may do this. I think it's uh, mainly we want to use in Hashimoto disease. Uh, this is the, will be the future uh, focus on our study in, in, in Poland. After the presentations, a general discussion took place. The topic of this year was functional foods and human intervention studies. The attendees debated in how human intervention studies could be conducted effectively. This was the 21st International Congress on Nutrition and Integrative Medicine. Every year, high-quality research results have been presented and evidence of functional foods have been accumulating steadily. AHCC Research Association will continue to discover the ideal purpose of functional foods.